What's up guys, Alex here, and this video I'm pretty excited about. So we are going to be talking about this profitable FanDuel Sportsbook promotion. It's really good. It's called First Basket Friday. So you bet $25 on a first basket score, you get a $1 bonus for each three-pointer scored in the game. So we bet $25 on Giannis to score the first bucket, and there are 22 points in the Bucks game. We get a bonus of $22 from FanDuel. So this is really profitable. We're going to go through the math. Um, there is the caveat that there's a maximum bonus of $25, but you know, for the sake of this video, we will ignore that. Now, the first thing we can do is we can look at the NBA slate tonight. There are nine NBA games to choose from. So what I did was I took an average of the threes per game for each team and added them together, right? So the Knicks and Bucks together are averaging 28.6 threes per game so far this season. Granted, there's only been like seven or eight games, but, you know, Cavs Raptors, they're only averaging 20.8 threes per game, whereas Knicks and Bucks are at 28.6. So when you're betting on this promotion, it makes sense to pick a game with a high point total, right? Like if you look at Spurs Magic, you're only expecting 212.5 points. And for Nets Pistons, you're only expecting 212. Whereas, you know, in Hornets Kings, you're expecting 226.5. So you can look at the total points market as a source of indication for what game should I bet on, as well as an average of the number of threes teams are making per game. So I zoned in on two of these games, the Knicks Bucks game and the Pacers Blazers game. And we can go through the math of this promo. Um, it should be clear, like it's very profitable. So if there weren't the caveat of a maximum bonus of $25, you know, you'd be betting $25 on a first basket score and expecting $28.6 or 2860 in a bonus from FanDuel just from the average number of threes scored in the game, right? So this promotion is really profitable. It's definitely something you want to bet. So what we can do is we can go to FanDuel and we can go to the next Bucks game and we can take these markets and put them into the spreadsheet. And all we're doing here is we're figuring out the hold of the market, right? So the first thing we can do is we put in all of FanDuel's markets. So Giannis was plus 380, Robinson was um, plus 1200. And what we can do is convert that to implied probabilities. So if you need a refresher on implied probabilities, you can just go to the odds converter calculator on Odds Jam, put in plus 380. You see that implies you need to win 20.83 percent of the time betting at plus 380 odds to break even. So to break even betting plus 380 wagers, you have to win 20.83 percent of the time. So we put in all of the implied probabilities for the 10 different first basket scorers um, from FanDuel. So one of these players, you know, going to score first, who's it going to be? Um, and what we do next is we add up the implied probability for all of the different options on FanDuel. So for all of the markets available right here, we add up their implied probabilities and we can see it turns out to be 1.18. So because this number is above one, that means this market has VIG, right? Which makes sense. That's how FanDuel makes money. They charge the VIG, the juice, the vigorish, whatever you want to refer to it as that's how FanDuel makes money. And what this number means is if you were betting on every single player to win $100, you would have to bet $117.78. So you would have to bet roughly $118 total just to get your 100 back if you were betting on each player to win 100. So then what we can do is just use the implied hold percentage formula. So one minus one over this. And we see that this market has a hold of 15.1%. That is a very high hold percentage. And you will notice that sports books tend to juice markets like this one, where there's a lot of different options like first basket score, Super Bowl, Super Bowl winner, you know, NASCAR, you know, cup winner. Things like that tend to have very high hold percentages compared to, let's say, a money line in an NBA game, right? So this hold percentage is 15.1%, which means if you were betting blindly, 
you would be expecting a loss of 15.1%, right? So nobody recommends betting on first basket scores um, if there's no promotion involved, just because of how high the hold percentage is, right? If we bet $100 every single day on different first basket scores on FanDuel, we're expecting to lose over $15 for every $100 that we're betting. Um, but again, because we're getting one dollar, you know, uh, for every three scored in the game, this promotion becomes, you know, insanely profitable. So again, we're getting one dollar per three pointer scored in the game. We're ignoring the caveat that you get a maximum bonus of twenty five dollars, just for you know the sake of example. And what we can see is just based on the threes, these teams are averaging twenty eight point six threes per game. We are expecting. $28.60 in bonus credit from FanDuel. So you can also, you know, say 25. So we can just say 25 here, um, just because that is part of the promotion. And again, it's still not perfect um, with regards to the math, but for the sake of example, this promotion is very profitable. You should do it. It doesn't matter really what game you're betting on, but this is really just also to show how high the hold percentages can get on FanDuel for some of these more niche markets like first basket scores. Um, so what we can see is that we're expecting to get $25 from FanDuel for first basket Friday. And we're getting, you know, so we're essentially getting our bet back, right? We only have to bet $25 on the first basket score. So if we bet $25 on any of these guys, we are expecting to lose 15.1% on our $25 bet, but we are getting $25 in bonus credit from FanDuel for the amount of three pointers in the game, right? So the expected value of just placing a bet on a first basket score in this game is roughly $21. Again, it's actually a bit lower just because of the terms of the promotion that, um, um, just because of the terms of the promotion that there's a maximum bonus of $25. But let's say it's close to $20, right? This promotion is very profitable. Every Friday, FanDuel is giving you roughly $20 in expected value. Um, so again, this is just, you know, this plus 25, right? So if we just bet $25 on a first basket score or market, we're expecting to lose roughly 15.1%. So we would never place this bet if there weren't the promotion, but with the promotion, this becomes profitable by, you know, roughly $20. So insanely profitable, definitely something you want to bet on. And again, you can look at games with the highest three point total to try to get an indication of, okay, which game should I pick? Um, for this specific promo, right? Knicks Bucks makes a lot more sense than Cavs Raptors. So DraftKings didn't have markets posted for the uh, Knicks Bucks game. So I also looked at Pacers Blazers just to get a sense of how is DraftKings juicing their market versus FanDuel. So we can do the same thing here. We can take the markets from DraftKings and put them into that spreadsheet as well as the markets from FanDuel. So you can see on DraftKings, Lillard is plus 500, whereas on FanDuel, he's, or he's plus five, what was he on DraftKings? He's plus 550 on DraftKings, McCollum's plus 600, whereas on FanDuel, Lillard's plus 500, McCollum's plus 550. So we can do the exact same thing here, and you'll see DraftKings is giving you better odds um, for the first basket score on every single player, literally every single player. So the hold percentage on FanDuel for the Blazers uh, Pacers game is 12.5%. So again, betting blindly, you're expecting to lose 12.5%, right? First basket score wagers are, are not profitable usually if there's not a promotion. Whereas on DraftKings, it's roughly half of that. It's 6.5%. So you're losing 6.5% for every $100 you bet. Um, and it's interesting because FanDuel is juicing their market. The hold percentage is roughly two times what it is on DraftKings. So maybe FanDuel just has, you know, way worse odds um, and higher VIG on these more niche markets. Or, you know, maybe because they're offering this promotion on Friday, they're juicing 
they're juicing their lines a bit more to make back some of the money that they're giving away from the promotion. I'm not sure. Um, but I just thought this was interesting as well as the difference in the implied hold from DraftKings markets versus FanDuel's markets for the Pacers Blazers first score score first um, basket score market. And again, you can use this math to figure out the hold percentage for, you know, any market that doesn't, you know, for any market, right? NASCAR cups, you can put in all the different outcomes of who could win. You can figure out the hold percentage, or you can do it for first touchdown scores in football, right? Super Bowl futures, all types of things. You can use the same math. You just add up the implied probabilities. Then you use the hold formula, one minus one over the sum of the implied probabilities to figure out the hold percentage, which helps you compare you know, between sports books, which book is offering, you know, the best odds. And you can see, you know, DraftKings is offering way better odds on first basket scores, at least for this specific game today, than FanDuel is. So I hope you found this video helpful. Any questions, leave them in the comments. And um, yeah, so Knicks Bucks game, Pacers Blazers, both look like good options for this FanDuel promo today. Thanks so much for your time.